my name is Sienna and I am a professional fiber artist, sculptor, installation artist, and I recently was commissioned to create a piece similar to this one, but a little larger. Uh, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to sit down in front of the camera and talk about my commission process from start to finish. So how I get my commissions, uh, to what type of legal documents are important in this process, to the creation, sourcing materials for the artwork, and then wrapping it all up, shipping it safely across the globe, um, insured, and what type of things should be shipped with the artwork to your client. Um, so to start, uh, I can break down just very simply what an art commission is. So an art commission is when a client or customer reaches out to an artist requesting a individualized piece of art. Uh, it may be a recreation of an existing piece made by the artist or something completely new. Uh, what's great about art commissions is that it gives clients the opportunity to receive a piece from the artist that fits perfectly in a space, whether it's the color palette, the composition, the size, um, the material. It really is offering a customizable experience for your art collector. This was not something that I learned in school. I did receive my Bachelor of Fine Arts in textiles and sculpture, and this just wasn't, at least from what I remember, this was not discussed, which is unfortunate, and I hope it is something that is included in more university curriculums. But the way that I've learned the past 10 years is talking to other artists, researching online, um, watching YouTube videos from other people, and just gathering as many resources and also just trial and error of realizing, wow, I really should have included that. I'm going to do that going forward or I will never do that again <laughs> because that was a waste of my time or really complicated. So yeah, I, I really wish that there was, um, when I was starting out, a video like this that just broke it down and offered guidance and advice and perspective. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is where and how I get art commissions. So the first space is social media. I mainly use Instagram and I make sure that my Instagram is up to date with uh, my current portfolio, my past work showing my art in different spaces, showing the process, showing it um, next to a person to give scale, really try to keep a variety of ways to share my artwork and have you know a diverse portfolio. And that way, collectors can scroll through and have a better idea of how my art could look in their space. Uh, so folks will send me direct messages or they go, to the link in my bio on Instagram to my website. And so that is the next space where I get art commission requests. So I think it is so important as an artist to have a website. And maybe that's something I can go into in a future video. But in short, I think an artist's website is so important to display your portfolio, to show your exhibition history, perhaps your publication history, your um, biography, your maybe artist statement, it depends. There's lots of different style of art websites. Um, and then also having a contact page or a place where it provides your email so folks know how to directly get in contact and request something like a commission. So the next space that I get requests is through online marketplaces. So there's a lot of different options out there. Some are invite only exclusive spaces. Some are um, free or subscription based or commissioned based. Some are geared towards the interior design world while others are much more fine art oriented or craft based. So the platform that I use is called West Cover. There's so much artwork on this space. Uh, it is geared more towards the interior design world, which I think is really wonderful as an artist, depending on the type of work that you make, 
to tap into different industries. So I exhibit in galleries, museums, uh, but I also love sharing my work in more interior design spaces and design show house events. So West Cover gives me the opportunity to not only sell existing artwork, um, to show artwork that I have sold. And it's also where folks can reach out to me to request a commission. And that's actually, this is the platform West Cover where I've received the commission that I'm working on right now. And so something to note with West Cover specifically is it's totally free to be a part of this platform, but they do take a commission. So they will take a commission from um, a custom piece made for a client or they'll take a commission from selling an existing piece of artwork. So that is important to keep in mind when you're pricing out your work um, to make sure that you're getting paid appropriately in addition to what money is going towards the platform. So the next space where I get commission requests is through art gallery representation. So I am represented by Singular. They are an international online gallery. Uh, I was invited to join their platform a few years ago, I think almost four years now. Not only do I sell my art through their platform, again, folks can see what I have, what I've made, and request a customized commission piece. Commission request doesn't need to be limited to an online digital gallery. You can also be represented by a physical gallery. With the Singular Art uh, this past year showed at a Miami art fair, and I did receive a commission request through that exposure. So there's just so many ways to get art commissions and then just also word of mouth through friends through family someone might see your art hanging on someone else's walls and get your information that way but don't i would suggest just don't limit yourself to a single space where where there's opportunity for you to get a commission okay so let's say someone has reached out um, or i'll give uh, the commission that i'm working on as an example so uh, this art collector contacted me through West Cover and expressed, um, asked my availability, expressed that they wanted this piece, uh, the same color palette of the example that's on my page and just asked, could I do it um, at 20 inches instead of this sample is much smaller. And so I confirmed my availability uh, and that led me to letting her know the price for the piece and the timeline. So those are some of the most important things that you want to confirm before you even begin, before you're sourcing materials and making the work. You wanna confirm the price, the deliverable, what is the artwork going to look like? Um, what is the size? What is the color? What is the material? And then the timeline is really important. You wanna make sure that you are giving a realistic timeline for yourself to make, but also that it is uh, in line with when the client needs slash wants it. And so once you have those details finalized, so important, you want to make a contract, an artist agreement, a commission agreement. This is legally Binding. And it is really important, not only for the buyer, um, but for the artist. And this is where you are going to outline expectations just to make sure that you aren't getting screwed over, pretty much. Um, so I have just looked online, art commission agreement template. That's my suggestion. Type that in on Google. There's going to be a bunch of different options that come up and look through them and see which one suits you the best, your practice, um, your needs, the buyer's needs. An, an agreement pretty much confirms the price, the timeline, the payment plan. When it comes to commissions, I personally, and this is actually very common, you have the buyer pay a 50% non-refundable deposit at the beginning, and this usually will fund the materials that you're buying. And then when the piece is complete and before it's shipped off, you will confirm that the artwork is complete and that's when they will make the second payment. And then you'll ship the work off. 
this is so important this protects you from getting scammed it's crazy there's so many weird scams out there where you're gonna receive an email or a dm about hey i want to surprise my wife with a piece of art um, i have a ten thousand dollar budget like these are scams so be professional be structured be detailed and you'll easily be able to find out who's scamming you and sometimes buyer is not scamming you they're not like a bot uh, but they may ghost you i've that's never happened to me but i've heard from other folks so a deposit is important to protect you financially i also in my agreements include that if there's a cancellation at any stage of the commission creation not only do they forfeit their 50 percent deposit they also have a fee a cancellation fee anyways i i just really suggest a agreement it's peace of mind to know that i'm protected and it also is very professional so moving on to the creation of the art uh, this is really going to vary for each artist um, but i do want to point out that some commissions for example i've had a few commissions that were for like luxury hotels or apartment buildings they had a very specific color palette in mind and i was hand dyeing the fabric and they wanted to see and confirm the color palette before moving forward. So I sent swa image swatches digitally and that confirmed the initial color palette, but then they wanted to see what that looked like on the actual fabric. So just be prepared and you can even, you know, upfront offer to send digital samples of the material, of the shapes. Also mocking up the composition can be really helpful, whether through a digital or hand sketch. Um, and then sometimes they actually want you to send the sample, the material to the buyer. I, um, this past year was part of a design show house in Florida. And I did this ceiling installation actually it was where this sculpture series was born. So this initially, this style was actually an installation on a wall and I sent a sample of this material and the layered texture to these two designers who, were, who I was working with and they were able to give me some feedback, just see it in the space while they were there to visualize it with everything else that they were pairing with this room. Uh, so that's definitely a good thing to offer and a good thing to be prepared for if it is requested. So sourcing your materials is important and making sure that you are getting the best price and quality uh, materials shipped or picked out in person. I actually live in this weird rural bubble where there's like no stores within like an hour, hour and a half range. Um, with materials for me to buy. It's crazy that there's, I mean, there's quilting shops, but quilting is not quite the type of materials that I work with. I rely a lot on ordering supplies online. So I would suggest um, doing your research, comparing different vendors and their prices. Also keeping in mind the shipping timeline. You do not want delayed shipping of materials to prevent you from reaching your deadline for your clients. I also find that in between commissions, I like to have samples sent. A lot of different vendors will send like a sample sheet, at least when it comes to textiles. So you can see the different colors and textures and that is really helpful for my collection so that I can quickly um, identify, oh, the client is looking for blue tones and I can go through my samples and see which blues would work beautifully with what they're requesting. And just, this is probably a conversation for another video um, about material sourcing, but just be thoughtful of who you're supporting, the type of materials that you're buying. Are they sustainable? Are they ethical? Avoid places like Amazon when possible and stick to smaller vendors. I shop a lot on Etsy, to be honest, um, because it's a lot of smaller companies and it feels good to support them. Next thing I wanna discuss as you're getting closer to finishing your piece, some buyers will want to see progress images, others 
could care less. They trust you. They trust your process. They know what they're going to get. Keep in mind for your own documentation archives to just document the process. I think that's really important. And then you can also share that documentation with future clients who want to know a bit more about the process. And now your piece is finished. And so what do you do with it? Um, this is something that I didn't think of when I first started taking on commissions, but what's really, it's important. It is not a necessity, but I do think it um, is very professional and great for collectors, depending on like what level collector they are, is to include a certificate of authenticity. This is a piece of paper I typically printed on like thick cardstock, high quality print. This is a way for the collector to prove the authenticity of the artwork. So yeah, I when I started doing certificate of authenticities, I looked up samples online. I personally only use that as a reference. I think it's important. Um, this goes as well for your um, commission agreement to personalize it. Use a platform like Canva, go in there and design your certificate of authenticity, your certificate of authenticity um, in a way that's on brand, let's say, for you as an artist. Um, so I will take a picture of the finished artwork I will remove the background and then upload it onto the document. And then typically it, this, the certificate of authenticity will include um, the artist's name, the date, year that it was made, the materials included, and then you're going to sign that certificate and you're going to date it. Uh, I include this with every piece of artwork that I send off. In addition to a care instruction guide, this is also very important, at least for a textile sculptor, because textiles can be confusing or intimidating to care for in the long term from dust, light, transport. And so I've learned, I guess, the hard way um, of outlining to people the basic steps to maintain and care for the artwork so that it lasts as long as possible. So I designed mine in Canva. Um, I'll do a little sample here, front and back. Uh, and this is outlining things like wear gloves when you are handling the artwork, especially textiles. If there's any oils or dirt, you are going to stain those textiles. Don't put it in front of harsh fluorescent light. That is going to uh, slowly break down not only the fibers, but also the colors. So it's good to keep it in like softer LEDs, keep it out of sunlight. Sunlight will really damage a lot of artwork, especially textile. And then things like cleaning, avoid harsh chemicals. Honestly, avoid any liquid. Do not clean textile art with liquid. At least don't clean mine with liquid. Anyways, you just want to let folks know how to, um, you know, let your art live as long as possible and to avoid damaging it because this is not second nature. This is not necessarily common knowledge for a lot of people, especially those who are like starting out and are new to the art collecting world. So I would highly suggest making your own version of a care guide. Uh, the next thing I include when I ship off my work is a thank you card. So again, I designed this in Canva and I handwrite a thank you card to every client that buys my work. I just think this is a really personal touch um, and helps people connect with you. Also, you know, something collectible for the collector to have um, in addition to your work. I like to make it like a little postcard so if people wanna frame that themselves uh, and hang it somewhere in their home or another space. It's just kind of like a little extra oomph. Uh, last is I just, I include a business card because why not? I have them slide it in with the other cards. Um, business cards are kind of old school. I don't think it's a necessity, but again, I have a 
stock of them so I might as well. That segues me to the next thing which is shipping. <sighs> as a three-dimensional artist, it is my least favorite least favorite thing about being an artist, not just with commissions, just in general, it's so stressful. And I have had really negative experiences shipping my art. And so this is one of the most important things that I wanna share because it is so challenging, especially nowadays, um, the past few years, these shipping carriers are overworked. Sometimes they're underpaid, but mainly they're just overworked and they could care less about the contents. So you want to protect yourself at all costs. So that includes what box you're using, how you're shipping it, the shipping carrier that you're using, insurance, and so on. So I, again, as a three-dimensional artist, this is going to vary depending on the type of art that you make, but I have learned the box is so important. I have honestly, I've had to file two different insurance claims um, against both were UPS. Personally, don't use UPS. I, I think FedEx or USPS, much more reliable. I had two different commissions show up with literally look like they had like punched and kicked the box. There was like holes through it. Like they had thrown it, knocked it over, or like crushed it. I mean, just destroyed my work. And thankfully I had it insured. Okay, I'm gonna go into that insurance situation a little bit later. Uh, so to start is what you're shipping your art in. I personally am de a devoted customer to this company called Qbox. Qbox creates really affordable crates that are lightweight. Normally art crates are made or just shipping crates in general are made out of wood. They're so heavy, they have to be freighted, so expensive to make um, or to buy pre-made uh, and so expensive to ship, especially internationally. So Qbox is an amazing resource. So Qbox is made with really thick layered uh, cardboard. This stuff is so strong. It would take a lot of force, a lot of force to break through. I have never had an issue with these boxes. They are so worth the investment. They are a little pricier than a regular box, but I'm telling you, don't do the regular box. It is too risky. Tears will be shed based on how packages are handled by carriers these days. So get something like a Q box or make your own crate. If you, if you have the skills and the resources, it is so worth that extra effort. And then the next important step is I do not go to FedEx, USPS, UPS, in person and, or online um, and pay for my shipping them. I have learned to go through a third party shipping company. Now they are not shipping the piece, but uh, so the one that I use is called Shippo. And so I have a Shippo account. I plug in all the shipping information, my address for the return, the destination, the contents, the value, and then they will pull up different prices and different shipping options with all the carriers. And it's just significantly cheaper. It's amazing. I use Shippo because they are international and I'm telling you, I have saved hundreds of dollars and I've never had issues with those labels making it to their destination. Also making sure that the piece is secured in the box. You may need to test it out. You may need to try different securing me methods. My textile pieces, they're not fragile like ceramic or glass, but they are definitely fragile if they're being like shaken up on a moving or a, a shipping truck. So make sure it's secured, make sure there's not a lot of space for your piece to shake around. You want to softly, gently pack your box. So if there's extra space, put some sort of cushion in there. We'll make sure that it's just not bouncing around because that can be really damaging to your artwork. The next step I want to discuss is to always, always ensure your art. It is just not worth the risk, even if it's something that's $50 
to ensure a package that's $50 is like two bucks. It is so worth it. Um, because things get lost frequently these days or they get destroyed and beat up with my luck. Um, not anymore with Keybox though. But insurance is just so important for peace of mind because you've put so much money and time into creating a piece of art and you want to make sure that if it gets damaged in the shipping carrier's hands that they are liable and that it is not a loss for you. And now I've had two different situations where very expensive pieces of art were destroyed. And I've heard horror stories from other artists. And I will say, they for me, they were both with UPS. They did their very best to not pay me. Even though legally it's a contract, I paid for that insurance. They damaged it, it was very clear. Um, they were doing whatever they could to not pay me for the insurance. So my biggest suggestion is if you unfortunately find yourself in a situation where your art has been damaged and you have insurance because you were smart about it, uh, it may take a month, two months, three months, who knows how long it may take, but do not stand down. Do not allow these bigger companies to walk over small businesses, artists, freelancers, whatever you do, don't just stand your ground. There have been so many times where I have just called every week, spent hours and hours on the phone and wanting to give up and feeling like I'm wasting my time. And maybe if it was a $50 thing, sure. But I do think that UPS would pay 50 bucks. But when it's something that's thousands of dollars, that's when there's gonna be pushback. And I think it's just criminal. So my suggestion is to stand your ground, push to get what is right, and it is well worth it. But hopefully you never have to deal with that experience. Um, and just in preparation, this is also something really important that I've did not know prior to shipping my work. I found this out once I had to file a claim. So this is again really important for artists to know is that as you're packaging your artwork, document, take pictures and videos, show how the artwork is being secured, what type of stuffing, what type of protection are you using? Is it bubble wrap? I hope not because bubble wrap is horrible, but is it crinkled paper um, or biodegradable pe packaging peanuts? Show the process, show how it's secured, and then box it up and take pictures of every single side of that box. They are going to request this when you make a claim. They are going to say they can't pay you unless you have this documentation. So it's really important to just make this a habit every time you ship something off. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. I guess um, the last thing I would say just in regards to shipping is to keep an eye on it send a shipping, a tracking number to your client, just keep them in the loop and make sure that when it's received, you see that it's delivered, check in with the client. Say, hey, you know, I saw it was delivered. I hope it arrives safe and sound. Please let me know um, because this is actually a good example. I shipped something uh, to a museum. Thankfully it was insured. They received it. Um, actually it wasn't a museum. It was a commission for an apartment building. They received it. I emailed them. And in this instance, they said, yeah, we're good to go. Blah, blah, blah. <sighs> they clearly, I don't even know what happened here, but about like a month or maybe five weeks later, they reached out to me saying, hey, the piece was destroyed inside the box. And I said, well, when I reached out, you know, <laughs> that was to confirm it arrived safely. Why am I just hearing about this now? And they even sent me pictures of the box and the box looked like pff, so beat up. So <sighs> just check in, make sure that the client is confirming everything's good to go and you can just check this off as a successful commission. 
So thank you so much for watching this video. If you've come all the way to the end, uh, I hope you found this really useful. I, I just really wish I had something like this as a resource starting out. And if you have anything to add from your experience, please share in the comments. Not only will I really appreciate that, but I'm sure there will be other artists who may go through the comments and really find your insight useful. And if you would like to see more of my work, have a better idea of the type of work that I'm shipping, you can go down to the link um, in, my in the description of this video with my website link as well as my social media Instagram link. And yeah, I appreciate your support and your time. Thank you.